just a moment. Have you heard the Mole Mystery Theater? Don't leave your radio. It follows immediately. Mole, M-O-L-L-E, the brushless shaving cream that guards your face with a special protective film, presents the Mole Mystery Theater. This is a series of programs designed for mystery fans and for all lovers of exciting, suspenseful entertainment. Every Tuesday night at this time, you are going to hear one of the great mystery stories of the past, the present, or the future. They will be selected and brought to you by Mr. Jeffrey Barnes. Mr. Barnes, who has made a lifelong study of mystery fiction, is a connoisseur of fine detective stories. Mr. Barnes. Good evening, and welcome to the Mole Mystery Theater. Our story tonight is a fast-paced, up-to-the-minute mystery by Dwight V. Babcock. It's titled, Homicide for Hammock. Our detective tonight is different. She is a beautiful blonde bombshell named Hannah Van Doren. But the story is Joe Kirby, and Mr. Kirby is here to tell you that story himself. Mr. Kirby. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. The story really started on the day I lost my job. I'd been selling high-priced cars and had wrecked a custom-built job that sold for 15000 Well, that afternoon, I met my friend Terry O'Connor at his office, and we started out for a short beer at our favorite. Don't seem very worried about losing a job, Joe. Well, oh, why should I? <laughs> You've been a sports columnist on that paper so long, Terry, you've forgotten how easy it is to get a new job. How are all the little O'Connors? Well, I don't want to know when you're coming over to dinner again. I'll tell her any time I'm invited. Hey, it's quarter or six. I've got to make a phone call. A babe, I suppose. No, nope, a new job, a defense plan. Look, I'd better duck into this drugstore. I'll meet you at Malone's bar in about ten minutes. Okay, Joe, but hurry. Remember, i got a family to go home to. Okay, Terry, I'll be there. Save me a beer. <laughs> Oh, right, there's Joe now. Hey, Joe, over here. Oh, hello, everybody. Hi. Everything okay? Sure, everything's okay. Hey, who's the beautiful face? She's with George Engel here. Mm-hmm. How can a heel like that get this pretty gal? Huh? Lay off, Lug. She's mine. Miss Hannah Van Dorn, may I present the eminent Joe Kirby of the three depression Kirby's. Hello, Mr. Kirby. Hello, Hannah. Hey, Harry. Give us a round here, huh? Okay, Mr. Kirby. Well, I hear you lost a job, Kirby, so I suppose you're broke. In a manner of speaking, yes. But uh, I'm looking for Steve Wurzel. He owed me 200 bucks. You got a fat chance of collecting. Uh, here we are, Mr. Kirby. Now, hi, Harry. Say, have you seen Steve Wurzel around? Uh, no, he hasn't been around all evening, Mr. Kirby. Funny, this is one of his hangouts. Well, here's to you, Harry, the best bartender in town. Who is this Steve Wurzel, Mr. Kirby? The spoiled son of the head chemist of the Smith factory. Now, when I say spoil, I mean rotten. It sounds like quite a lad. A heel. And I'm going to collect my dough from him tonight or take it out of his hide. I know an easier way to make money. How about coming out to the racetrack tomorrow? I got a good horse in the fourth. Well, that's an idea. But I'll need the dough worth to loan me to take Miss Van Doren with me. What's your number, beautiful? I'm in the book. Hey, hey, stop trying to chisel in on my woman. On second thought, maybe she's just what a deadbeat like you deserve. Sour grapes are just jealous, Engel. Down around City Hall, they call her Homicide Hannah, the gorgeous ghoul. She's bloodthirsty. She goes around hoping for a homicide to happen to somebody. This beautiful girl? Say it isn't so. But it is. I write up crime stories for True Crime Magazine. A scandalous profession for such a fair flower of womanhood. What's the world coming to? A girl has to live. Ah, I understand, my dear. And I'm just the little fella to show you how to live well. Now, I'll call you for that date in the morning. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get my beauty sleep. You coming with me, Terry? There's my bungalow, Terry. Hey, I got some beer that ought to be cold as ice. Why not stop in for a minute, huh? Okay, I'll have one for the road. Hey, looks like you got company. The car out front. Yeah, looks like Veronica Smith. Hi there. That you, Veronica? Hello, Jojo. Millie and I just came over to see you. We wanted you to come over to the house. My dear little brother is giving a party. Uh uh-uh, uh, no. Nope. Too many stuffed shirts. Terry, this is Veronica Smith. Mill no Robinson. How do you do? Where are you? Where have you been, Jojo? Out looking for Steve Wurzel. Say, he isn't at your place, is he? Just because his father is Dad's chief chemist doesn't mean he comes to our parties. 
Does he owe you money? Yeah. And when I catch him, I'll take it out of his hide. Oh, well, I'll be glad to help you. He's a termite. Hey, we were going to have a nightcap. Want to come back and join us? No, not now, Jojo. We, uh, we have to get back to the party. Goodbye, Mr. O'Connor. Come on, though. Yes, Veronica. Uh, I'll be seeing you, Jojo. Yeah, so long. Good night. Goodbye. Glad to meet you. Now, what was the matter with her? What do you mean? Well, she seems jumpy. Well, let's go in and get our nightcap, huh? Okay, my friend. Uh-oh. What's wrong, Joe? With the keys in the lock. Hey, I'm sure I didn't leave it there. Well, who else would, Dope? Come on, come on. Open up. Okay. There we are. Hey, I wonder how Veronica... Hey! There's a man on the floor. It's Steve Wetzel. How did he get here? Hey, Joe. Joe, he's dead. Well, what do you know? The lousy double cross are getting himself killed before I can collect from him. On my carpet, too. Now, wait a minute, Joe. This is serious. You told a lot of people tonight you were looking for Steve. And the policeman think you found him. That night... It's back yours? Yeah. It's my paper knife. But I was with you. Not all the time, Joe. We were telephoning. That's right. Malone's bar is only two blocks from here. Yeah, I certainly don't have an alibi. Well, I know you didn't do it, Joe, but the cops won't. Hey, look, you better come and spend the night at my house. I'll swear you're with me all evening. Then we can come back and discover the body in the morning. Yeah, guess it's the only thing to do. Okay, Terry, let's go. Let's stop in at the hop around the corner and get that drink. I need it now. <laughs> Look over there in that booth. George Engel and Hannah. Well, so it is. Well, let's join them. Yeah, hello there. Hi. I thought we got rid of you once. Welcome to our party. We just stopped in here for a sandwich. Why don't you sit somewhere else? Or are you two bums following us? Not you, Engel. The beautiful damsel with you. Well, go out and find your own beautiful damsel. <laughs> you are beautiful, Hannah. Say, can you cook? Oh, never mind. Marry me anyway. Well, Mr. Kirby, I hardly know you. Besides, you lost your job. Incidental. Purely incidental. However, I don't require an immediate answer. Take a minute or two to think it over. I will. Did you find work, sir? Yes and no. What do you mean, yes and no? He means no. How did Terry know which you meant, Joe? And he guessed. Say confidentially, honey. I'm in a jam. Ouch! What's the matter? Huh? Terry kicked me. Oh, must have been an accident. Hello, Mr. Ringo. Mr. Van Doren. Hi, Terry. Hello. Hi, Madden. What's up? Hi, Sergeant. Look, if I give you boys the tip off, will you give me some credit in your story? Sure, Sarge. What is it? I'm looking for a guy named Kirby. Joseph Kirby. Do you know him? I, uh... Well, what do you want him for, Madden? Murder. A murder? Where? Then we got a call to investigate his apartment. We went right over to his joint, and there was this stiff laid out on the rug with a shiv stuck in his heart. Died about six o'clock. Some guy named Wurzel. Oh, what do you know about that? In Kirby's apartment? Who phoned in? We don't know. He didn't give no name. It was, you know, anonymous. But the guy said we'd probably find this Kirby in some bar, so we're looking. You know him? I, uh... Hey, you sure it was a man who called? Yeah, it might have been a woman. Hey, what is this? You're all acting funny. Let's get it over with, Terry. The suspense is killing me. Officer, my name is Joe Kirby. Here he is, Inspector. I found him in a bar around the corner. Okay, Madden. For the record, Kirby, what's your full name? Joseph Jefferson Kirby. What are Miss Van Doren, Engel, and O'Connor doing here? We were with Joe, Inspector. So we came back here to see if we could help him. And Joe didn't kill Wurzel either. Take it easy, O'Connor. Nobody said he did yet. But we're going to find out. Did you kill him, Kirby? Sure, he killed him. What's Why, the idea, Joe, George? Why, he did it all for you, baby. It's a Christmas present. A homicide for Hannah. There's your motive, Inspector. I put two cents at front of the nose angle, joking at a time like this. Don't try to be funny about this, George. Terry's right. I know he wouldn't do it. Did you, Joe? No, I'm afraid not. Not even for you, Hannah. Anything else but not that. Hey, wait a minute. I'm still handling the investigation around here. Where were you between five and six this evening, Kirby? He was with me. All the time, O'Connor? No, I wasn't with Terry all the time. He was looking for Steve Wurzel. Very interesting. Why did you want to see him, Kirby? Well... Well, Wurzel owed him money, and Kirby said he was going to collect. Or take it out of Wurzel's hide. Can't you keep him out shut, Angle? What are you trying to do? I was only kidding. If Kirby did kill Wurzel, we'd all owe him a vote of thanks. You're in a tough spot, Kirby. You better talk if you want to get out of it. Well, Inspector, I don't know why Wurzel came here or who killed him. I wasn't in the apartment. Can you give me an alibi for this evening? Well, I met Terry about quarter to six. At six, I left him to make a phone call. Yeah? Who'd you call? I tried to get the Morse plane factory, Mr. Harris, but he wasn't there. And then? I joined Terry at Malone's bar. We've been together ever since. That's right. Well, I guess that's about all for now. But you're not in the clear by any means, Kirby. I won't pull you in yet. 
Thanks for nothing. Well, Terry, my boy, how about you and me getting down to the paper, knocking out some copy of this murder? It'll be a scoop for us. Yeah, Yes, for better. Uh, coming with me, huh? No, uh, I want to stay and talk to Joe a few minutes. Now, what are you up to, Miss Sundorn? Why, nothing, Inspector. I, I just want to have a private interview with Mr. Kirby. So when you solve the case, I'll have all the background I need for a surefire magazine. Thing. I see. I want to get it now before Mr. Kirby has to start combing reporters out of his hair. Well, I wouldn't worry about that. I'll leave Madden outside the door. Just so Kirby won't be bothered, of course. Of course. That's nice of you, Inspector. Now, get out, all of you. I can't get my interview with you cluttering up the place. Okay, so long, Adam. So long, Joe. See you later. Well, darn. It's chilly in here, isn't it? Mm. I'll light a fire. See, you know, I used to be a Boy Scout. I can do it with three matches or less. <laughs> You're a crazy sort of guy, Joe. Maybe. Hey, uh, what's this guy Engel in your life? George is an old friend. Why? I just wanted... Hey, don't your folks worry when you stay out all night digging up murders? I haven't any folks. My mother died when I was a child, and my father was killed five years ago. He was a captain of detectives. An orphan, huh? Well, I'm an orphan, too. Fate must have thrown us together so I can take care of you. <laughs> you better take care of yourself. Say, how about helping me find who killed Wurzel? No, I bother. I'd much rather kiss you like this. <laughs> hey! Oh, that's jujitsu. You want to play some more? Oh, oh no, thanks. Uh, how was I to know you'd turn out to be a female strangler, Lewis? Huh? <laughs> oh, just trying to get better acquainted. Here I get slammed against my own wall. I hope I didn't really hurt your back. Well, I'll live, I guess. <laughs> and I'll help you find the murderer. It's safer than making love to you. But don't forget, we're going to the opening of the races tomorrow. It's still on, isn't it? Mm -hmm, of course. I've got a car, so I'll pick you up about 11.30. Good night, Joe. Good night. <laughs> you beautiful wrestler. <laughs> There's a couple of people here to see you. Miss Veronica Smith and the Milton Robinson. Send them in. Oh, hello, Veronica. Hi, Milt. I just had to come to see you, Jojo, after reading this morning's papers. Horrible. Sorry for you, Kirby. I just got up. What's the paper say, Veronica? You're suspected of killing Steve Wurzel in a fight about money. My, my. How these newspapers do exaggerate. Say, were you inside my place last night, Veronica? No. No, we weren't, Jojo. We we just knocked on the door and there wasn't any answer, so we left. That's when we met you. Then why wouldn't you come back with me? Well, we, we had to get home. I had to get to the party and Milt had to get home to his mother. You see, she's blind and she gets frightened when Milt is away too long. I isn't that right, Milt? Yes, indeed, Veron. Yes. Okay, that's your story. I didn't mention you to the cops anyway. Thanks very much. Madden said you're up, so I'm just walking in. Oh, oh I didn't know you had come. Oh, it's all right, Hannah. Hannah, this is Veronica and Milt. How, How do you do? do? Hello. Uh, Joe, your taste is improving. She's a lovely blonde. And that she is, and we're off to the races. You all going? Yes, we are, and I have my station wagon. We can all go together. Well, well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Nice crowd here today, Joe. Yeah. Oh, look, there's Terry O'Connor. Hi, Terry. Hello, Terry. Hello, children. Stick around. I'll have some chips for you. Hey, Joe, meet me under the stairs, back by the paddock in a few minutes. I've got a hot tip in the murder. Yeah, what? Seems old Jake Wurzel had another name once, back in Chicago. And I... Oh, nuts, here comes Engel. Well, I'll see you later. Well, well, beauty and the beast. Greetings respected. Go away, Engel, you give me indigestion. Yeah, first you steal my girl, then you want to drive me away. Did you hear the newest guess about your murder? What is it? Some bright cop got the idea that Steve was killed by spies. His old man, Jake Wurzel, just invented a chemical for neutralizing chlorine gas. This guy thinks they tried to get the secret out of Steve and killed him when they failed. I think it's nuts. Yeah, so do I. But I'm glad somebody doesn't think I'm the murderer. Well, come on. Let's get away from here, Hannah. The air's bad. You know, I'm covering the murder now. You wouldn't care to give me a statement, would you, Mr. Cuddy? Yeah, stay away from me, unquote. Hey, Hannah, would you do me a favor? Wait here a minute. I have to go to the paddock and see a man about a horse. Mm -hmm. I want to go along. You're going to meet Terry, and it has something to do with the murder. I heard him. That stage was for Terry Miles. Okay, come on. Where's your secret meeting place, Mr. Conspirator? It's around the corner here. Under those back stairs. Right over here. Right over there. But no Terry. Hey, look. He's on the floor. He's hurt. Hey, Terry. Terry, Terry, what's the matter? Terry. He isn't going to answer, Joe. Can't you see the knife in his throat? He's dead. Yeah, I see. But what about you, Joe? If the cops find you here with another murder, they'll... Well, what do you mean, if? 
Here comes one right now. Let me do the talking, Joe. No, no, not me. I'm getting out of here. There's something I've got to find out. I'll see you later. Hey, you. Stop in the name of the law. Halt. Grab fire. Good luck. Good luck, Joe. <laughs> friends. There's nothing like a few pistol shots to start some action. And plenty of action is just what we're headed for when our Mole Mystery Theater play resumes. You know, Mr. Barnes, what you just said is exactly Joe Moran's idea. Yes, Dan, how's that? Well, my old friend Joe is a real Mole fan who wants every man to enjoy the better shaves it gives. And he says that one good way for me to remind folks of how good Mole is and to stir them into action is by firing a pistol shot or so. So... And uh, what are you going to do about it, Dan? Well, just this. Gentlemen, of course you realize that the little nicks and scrapes you got while shaving today will make tomorrow's shave all the more difficult. Well, why don't you buy Mole, the brushless shaving cream that puts face protection first. Mole has a special protective film, a film with more real body and substance than light fluffy cream. That film acts in a positive way to guard your tender skin from irritating nicks and scrapes. Also, Mole contains an abundance of beard-softening ingredients and plenty of bland, non-irritating oils. So, gentlemen, to enjoy shaves that get better and better as Mole's protective film guards your face from nicks and scrapes, why don't you just... Yes, that's right. Shoot around to the store and buy a tube or jar of M-O-L-L-E. Mole Brushless Shaving Cream. Well, uh, I'm uh, out of ammunition and my story's told... So now here's Mr. Joe Kirby to bring you Act Two of Homicide for Hannah. Well, after Hannah and I found Terry's body at the racetrack, the cop tried to stop me. But I got away and grabbed a cab into town. Terry had mentioned a clue and said he wanted to tell me more just before he was killed. Maybe he had told his wife something about what he learned. It wasn't much to go on, but it was my only chance. So I went to see Ida O'Connor at their home on Laurel... They, they told you, Ida? You, you know about Terry? Yes. The paper telephone. He's gone, Joe. Terry's gone. You know, they're saying I did it, Ida. Yes, I know. But I don't believe it. Well, you were his friend. Well, thanks, Ida. Now, you've got to buck up for the kid's sake. We can't bring Terry back. But I want to do something about it. And maybe you can help. How? Oh. When Terry was home last night... Did he say anything about what he was working on, about what happened at my place last night? Well, yes. He, well, he was all excited. He, he said he had a chance to clear you completely, and and it would mean a big bonus for him, and maybe a raise. Where had he been, Ida? Well, he'd been at the office going through some old newspapers. He showed me one of the clippings. A clipping? You remember what it was about? Well, it was about a murder trial in Chicago back in uh, 1925, I think. A man named uh, Wilson had killed another man, had been acquitted. There were pictures of the man. I I didn't read it except for the headlines. It's not very definite, but I'll try to run it down. Now, you keep your chin up, Ida. I'll get Terry's murderer if it's the last thing I do. Dumb, like coming back to your own apartment where the police can find you easily? Well, I can't get away from them forever. I might as well be comfortable while I wait. Did you come straight here from the track? No. I was downtown reading some old newspapers. You would. I don't suppose you thought of reading the last edition of today's paper while you were there. No. Why? Nothing, except that while you were running around making sure you have no alibi, Steve's father, old Jacob Wurzel, was killed. Murdered? Yes. Say, this is getting to be an epidemic. Well, eat, drink, and be merry. Uh, How about a highball, Hannah? No, thanks, sir. I want to talk to you, Joan. Please be serious. Yes, and I'll be... Well, oh, maybe that's the cops now. Come in. Hello, Jojo. You see, Milton, I told you he'd be here. Milton tried to argue me out of coming. He said you wouldn't be here. Well, I thought with the police after him. Oh, you did, did you? Well, sit down, Veronica. Thanks. We're going to have quite a little gathering here. I'm expecting the police any minute. Then we'll try out a little idea I've got. What sort of idea? Yes, what is it? Relax, Hannah. I'm just beginning to get smart. 
Now we wait for the police. Here, here, the boy detective. And I think I hear the ponderous tread of the law coming this way right now. And well, I thought you'd be here, Kirby, when I saw the visitors go in. I was especially glad to see Miss Veronica Smith arrive. Why? I have a witness who places your car here last night. So I have a warrant charging you and Kirby with murder. Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. Not so fast. You can't do that. Oh, I can't, eh? Well, who's going to stop me? But wait a minute. I know who committed all three murders. You better know. be good, Kirby. What's your story? Well, originally, the murderer had only intended to kill Steve Wurzel and his father. Terry O'Connor was killed because he had a lead to the murderer. Terry? Where would he get a lead? I found out Terry had been looking up an old murder in Chicago in 1925. That murderer was a man named Wilson, and he was acquitted. Yeah, interesting. But what does it have to do with this? There were pictures in the paper. Wilson was Jake Wurzel, Steve's father. And Jake Wurzel killed somebody? Well, Wurzel or Wilson was a cosmetics manufacturer then. He put an eyelash dye on the market that contained poison, and several people were blinded. He had a good lawyer, so he wasn't prosecuted. Well, where does the killing come in? And how does it tie in with this case? I'm coming to that. The husband of one of the blinded women, a fellow named Katie, tried to kill Jake Wurzel. But Wurzel killed him first. So Wurzel changed his name and came out to Hollywood? Right. Well, that blind woman and the man who was killed had a son. Oh, how? I'm beginning to get the idea. Right. I'm betting that son grew up with one idea. To make the Wurzels pay for his mother's suffering and his father's death. And who do you think this son is, Kirby? You moved here from Chicago, didn't you, Milt Robinson? Yes, and your father is dead and your mother is blind. The name of this family was Katie, but it could have been changed later, just as Wurzels was. That's absurd. And Milt was here last night with Veronica. She may have lied to protect him, but that's the only way she's implicated. I I did lie. I lost my handkerchief and Milt went back up after it. He he told me that he tried Joe's door and it opened and he saw someone in there dead on the floor. But I don't think he did it. Of course I didn't. Hmm, Maybe you've made a case after all, Kirby. Well, Robinson, you're making a terrible mistake. I haven't killed anyone. My name wasn't Katie. You can find my birth certificate on file in Chicago. My father died a natural death. My mother was blinded in an auto accident. You can check all those things. That's true. I'm sorry. But it seemed right. I ought to let you stew in your own juice, Joe, for holding out on me, but I know who the Katie boy is. You know. Hannah, you do? Who is it, Miss Van Doren? I'm almost sure it's George Engel. George what, Engel? the newspaper reporter? Yes, I know he's from Chicago. His father's dead and so is his mother, but she was blind. He told me about it and seemed very bitter. And he did overhear Terry telling me that he had a clue. He could have reached the paddock just to hit him. I'm sure it's George Engel. He fits all the way around. Hey, wait a minute, though. He couldn't have killed Steve Wurzel. He was with you all evening. No, he wasn't. There wasn't any reason to mention it before, but he left me at the bar for almost a half hour between 5 and 5.30, the time when Steve was killed. That's just about when Terry and I left his office. You sure about those things, Miss Van Doren? Positive, Inspector. Joe's giving you the motive, and Engel's the only one who fits it. I think you better act fast, too. He succeeded in killing both Wurzel, so he'll probably try to leave town now. You're right. I'll get a drag that out immediately. Well, I'm sorry about almost pulling you in, Kirby. Come along, Veronica. We'd better go, too. Yes, Milton. I'm really very sorry, Milton. Forget it, Kirby. Well, goodbye, all of you. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye, Drop in again when I have another murder. <laughs> I call beautiful teamwork. And we collect the $5,000 reward that the newspaper put up for information leading to the arrest of Terry's murderer. Say, I'd forgotten about the reward. $2,500 each. I don't want mine, though. I want it turned over to Ida O'Connor, Terry's widow. Okay. I guess I can be as generous as you. I'll turn my share over to her, too. Well, happy days, partner. We'll die broke but happy. You're a sweetheart. Now, wait till I mix a couple of drinks. We'll have a toast to that. Don't rush off, Kirby. George. You... Yeah. Little Georgie, your pal, with a gun, you'll notice. So don't move. I was out in the kitchen, heard the whole thing. I hid until the cops left. I waited to kill you, Kirby. It's too late, George. They know everything anyway. I know, I know. I just don't like Kirby. Cutting in when you were my girl and for generally acting smart. Besides, one more killing won't hurt my record. This one's all for you and your story. (laughs) A homicide for Hannah. You rat. You didn't have to kill Terry any more than you have to kill me. But you like to kill, don't you? You're killed crazy. Well, I'm going to take that gun away from you. Stand back, Kirby. I got him, Joe. Suffering chats. That's jujitsu again. He's knocked out. Cold as a cucumber. Well, my father always told me it'd come in handy. Better call the police back. Yeah, I will. Oh, who'd think a beautiful babe like you could toss a big man clear across the room? You saved my life. I'm going to kiss you right... Uh Oh, Maybe I better not. <laughs> oh, brother, am I going to have fun married to a female wrestler?
ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard the Moley Mystery Theater presentation, Homicide for Hannah, and a very exciting, eventful case it was. Now we continue with still another case, one that I'm sure the men in our audience will find eventful and helpful. All right, then? Oh, friends, this is the story in words and music of Wilbur. Wilbur used to be the sort of guy who woke up in the morning with a grouch. When his wife spoke to him, Wilbur would answer something like this. Yes, very grumpily. Because he was almost positive he was in for an unpleasant time with his morning shave. And as Wilbur shaved, as he nicked and scraped his face, his spirits got lower, lower, and lower. Well, finally, Wilbur listened to the Mole Mystery Theater one night. He learned how Mole puts face protection first. He heard about Mole's special protective film, a film that helps guard against nicks and scrapes because it has plenty of real body and substance, much more than light, fluffy cream. So, Wilbur bought a jar of Mole. And now he greets his wife every morning something like this. So he feels swell since he discovered for himself that his Mole special protective film helps guard your face... Day after day, your shaves get better, better, and better. So, gentlemen, why don't you buy M-O-L-L-E? Mole, the brushless shaving cream that puts face protection first. And now here's Jeffrey Barnes to tell you about next week's story. Mystery fans, we were unable to introduce our new detective, Jonathan Pierce, tonight, as previously announced. But he will definitely be with us next week in an exciting story about beautiful girls, antiques, and murder, entitled The Mystery of the Seven Keys. So be sure to listen in to Jonathan Pierce in The Mystery of the Seven Keys. <laughs> Tonight's story was adapted for radio by Ken Crossan and H.L. Gold. The original music on this program is composed by Jack Miller. Until next Tuesday, this is Dan Seymour saying good night and good shaving for Mole Brushless Shaving Cream. Do me a favor, folks, will you? Look at the sleeve cuff of your dress or suit. Chances are, if it isn't brand new or right back from the cleaners, it's a bit dirty. And if you had two heads, you could turn one around, and you'd see that the neckband of said suit or dress is soiled, too. But that's no reason to send the whole garment to the cleaners. Simply buy a bottle of Energine cleaning fluid and take out the dirt and the grease yourself. Energine works quickly and easily on grease stains. Energine is economical, too, and a mighty handy item to keep in the house for all tough and stubborn cleaning jobs. So tomorrow, get a bottle of Energene. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm-hmm.